what a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty, what a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, oh, what a mighty. What a mighty God we serve! Oh, what a mighty God we serve! Yes, what a mighty God we serve! Oh, what a mighty, what a mighty, what a mighty God we serve! Oh, what a mighty God we serve! Yes, what a mighty God we serve! Oh, what a mighty, what a mighty! What a mighty God! Let us sing, let us sing and praise His name. Oh, let us sing and praise the Lord. Oh, let us sing, let us sing. Oh, let us sing and praise. Why don't you greet your brother, and greet your sister? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God oh we serve Yes What a mighty Oh what a mighty What a mighty God we serve Hallelujah 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 Blessed to be a wonderful name Hallelujah Blessed be a wonderful name. How many love him this morning? Oh, let's give him some praise in the house this morning. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be a name. My, my, my. Jesus is mine. Oh, my, my, my. Jesus is mine.
Hallelujah. Blessed be your wonderful name. How oh, I love you, Lord. You're my all in all this morning. Oh, hallelujah. How many love him this morning? Oh, he's my all in all. He's my everything this morning. Without him, I can't do nothing. Let's sing that song, How oh, I love you, Lord. You're my all in all. How oh, I love you, Lord. You're my all in all. Oh, I can see your face. Oh, your glory. my spirit free you set my spirit free oh words can never tell oh how I love you Lord how I love you Lord oh how I love you're my all in all you're my all I can see your face I can see your face your glory and your grace your glory and your grace when you speak to me when you speak you set my spirit free this morning you set my spirit free oh words can never tell how oh, i love you lord how i love you lord how oh, i love you lord oh how i love forget about who's next to you right now and just concentrate on him I can see your face Your glory and your grace When you speak to me You set my spirit free You set my spirit free Oh, words can never tell Oh, how I worship him this morning give him praise give him glory give him honor oh hallelujah 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 oh we love you this morning lord when you speak to me lord you set my spirit free lord oh hallelujah hallelujah oh yeah, yeah oh glory be to your name lord oh blessed be your name blessed be your name morning father oh hallelujah 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 oh blessed be your wonderful name blessed be your name blessed be your name as we change all of the silver let's sing that song i love you lord i love you lord oh hallelujah 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 oh blessed be your name blessed be your name you love him this morning you love him this morning oh then give him some praise Give him some glory. Give him some worship this morning. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you, Lord. Today because, because you cared for me in such a special way. In such a special way. Oh, I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Say it 
one more time, I love you. Oh, I love you. such a special way, in such a special way, yes I pray, oh I lift you up and I magnify your name, that's why my heart is filled, let's just sing it one more time with your hands lifted, oh special way and yes I praise you oh I lift you up and I magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise let's just give the Lord a hand of praise this morning oh blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy this morning that we could be called the sons of God, Father. Lord, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we are so grateful this morning. Lord, there are so many people around the world who don't have the blessed privilege and honor to be able to gather like this, Father. And we are so grateful this morning, Lord, that you call us from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, Father, from our diverse backgrounds and villages. And Lord, the way we were brought up, but we are come and you, we are united this morning under your shed blood because only under the blood could there be fellowship father may you pour out your spirit this morning may you bless everyone that's here this morning lord may you bless those connected on the internet lord may the chains and the shackles be broken may the holy ghost pour out may you use me as your instrument may this service be a different kind of a service this morning we are under great expectation to see jesus walk out of the bible and be a living reality here among your people Father. Lord, may you anoint the people. Father, may you anoint the reading of the word, anoint the hearing of the word. We want to pray a special blessing on your servant and Lord, our pastor, Brother over that you would give him strength in his body, that you would touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. May you be with his wife. May you be with the ministry. May you be with all of the church in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And the church says, amen, amen and amen. We do have a note of praise. Uh, prayer was offered by my cousin Errol Rushford for high blood sh sugar and pressure. He is out of the hospital and is doing much better. We thank the Lord for that this morning. From Sister Kangley. Uh, we do have a few prayer requests this morning. From Brother Francis Timothy for my brother Edmund Timothy to you for an operation tomorrow on his vertebrae. Please pray that God guides a doctor's hands for a successful operation. And we also want to pray for Brother Stephen Oliveri, suffering with high blood pressure this morning. And we want to pray for Sister Grace Ovid for a safe delivery. The baby could be due any day now. We want to remember her in prayer as well. And if there's any unwritten or unspoken requests you want to show by a raise of hands as we approach the throne of God this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to your throne, Lord, and knowing we have rights of access to you this morning, Father. And Lord, we have seen the sick healed, we have seen deliverances, we have seen outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and Lord, we have a note of praise right here from a prayer request that was offered, Father. Lord, this morning we come to you once again, knowing that you are never tired of hearing from us, Father, but we have needs this morning. We are a needy people this morning, Father. Lord, we want to bring 
Edmund Timothy before you this morning Lord and before the doctor's hands would even touch him father the situation could be resolved father may there be a safe Lord operation Lord God we want to bring brother Stephen Oliveri Lord a soldier in the army of the Lord and the enemy has attacked him but Satan the blood of Jesus is against you this morning we speak a word we proclaim healing right now from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet that he could be back at his post of duty may you touch him his wife and family in the precious name of Jesus Christ Lord and for sister Grace Ovid Lord about to have that baby any day now may you touch her in body even now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet may she have a safe delivery and may all be well and for all the hands that were raised both here and maybe on the internet father may you touch your people in the precious name of Jesus Christ and the church says yeah. amen and amen and amen you may be seated for a few minutes Amen. Well, I greet you this morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Greetings from Germany and from Brother Zygmunt Colin Brenner and the church there in Ottenbach. They send their greetings to the Headstone Tabernacle. It was really a blessing to be there in fellowship with them. And we are under great expectation for what God is doing and what God is about to do. Amen. We do have some visitors this morning. Uh, Josiah Punch and Janika Punch, we'd like to welcome you to the Headstone Tabernacle. Invited by Brother Bevin Punch, welcome. And we also have Amila, Jamila, Olivia Ramada. I'm not sure who invited, but I see a name here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so, everybody feeling fine? Everybody prayed up this morning? Everybody read the Bible this morning? Everybody is on fire this morning. Everybody have their swords drawn this morning. Everybody under expectation this morning. Everybody doing your part this morning. Because you know the preacher cannot bring a revival. It takes the people to be under expectation to bring a revival. So we are not here just to wait and bring food for you. But there's some fresh killed meat and there's some killing to be done. Of some meat that we got to eat this morning. But it's an army this morning. And we want every soldier to do their part. We want every brother to take his place. Because that's the promise that's over us where every man take his place every husband take his place every wife take her place every son take his place every daughter take her place can the church say amen, amen. and it's such a thing you know there was a situation in Paris about two weeks ago with a terrorist attack and uh, having to travel through Europe to obviously get to Germany going through the airports you see the heightened tension and the the checks and the double checks and the triple checks because men's hearts are failing for fear because man doesn't know what to expect but what is taking place is only scripture being fulfilled so the bride is never surprised the bride is never worried the bride is never concerned because all of this is the fulfillment of prophecy and what takes place outside the church is really not the sign for the church what takes place inside the church is what we are looking for because we are under expectation for the coming of the Lord make sure your expectation is for the coming of the Lord because you go to get what you expect can the church say amen? amen and as the time brother Kangal is getting shorter the devil is going to do everything he can to keep you from your promise as the time gets closer he knows he doesn't have too much time left so he's going to do everything he can to take your joy to take your peace to mess with your prayer life to take away your time from the scripture to influence when you come to church and he's going to do all in his power and that's why we came here this morning to do all in our power to get ready because his wife hath made herself ready can the church say amen amen, amen. so I'm at the expectation this morning for what God is going to do. I really want to salute Brother Ovid for the last three messages. You appreciate those messages? The passion to know the word, the cry to get in the spirit, and the fervent desire to please God. That should be your identification. A passion to know the word, a cry 
cry there's always a cry in your soul to be in the spirit you can exist if you're out of the spirit you don't want to live if you're out of the spirit you want to be in the word and you want to be in the spirit and more than that you want to have a fervent desire to please God when you wake up in the morning you want to please God before you go to bed at night you want to please God when you're on the job you want to please God not please the neighbor not please your co-worker not please your boss not please the pastor not please the elder but please God can the church say amen, amen. you know and uh, when I heard him preach the first message the passion to know the word the Lord dropped a message in my heart since that week and I told him I have something and then he told me he wanted to do a three-part series so I said well God knows how to unfold everything because the thought I had I was like my is gonna be really fitting to follow what he brought so I want to kind of touch on something this morning a bit of teaching a bit of talking a bit of preaching but I believe that the Lord has given me something and God is gonna bless this morning so everybody feeling fine yeah. can we give the Lord a hand of praise this morning you may be seated so before I read a scripture I kind of want to introduce where I'm going this morning now every biblical character everyone in the Bible has a unique place a unique role a unique purpose for some the story of their lives will span decades and for others in the Bible their ministry would have lasted for just a few hours with the limited ability of our minds to fully comprehend every aspect of what transpired in this fraction of eternity we call time it is impossible for us to place one character above the other how do you compare the life of Abraham with the life of Noah how do you compare the life of Noah with the life of Jeremiah how do you compare the life of the mighty prophet Elijah with Nathan how do you compare Samuel with Barak how do you even compare one to the other how do you compare the prophet Elijah for example with Simon of Cyrene everyone knows the story of Elijah Elijah shut the heavens Elijah called for fire Elijah took his mantle and struck Elisha the impact of Elijah's ministry was so great that Ahab asked are you the one that troubles Israel Elijah was just special he was just unique there was just something about Elijah his role was for many many years and the life and the spirit of Elijah was found on Elisha it could be found on John the Baptist and we know it's found on William Marion Branham a 20th century prophet so Elijah stands out as a special kind of a prophet as a special kind of a man but in this drama of God God has players and he has individuals for a specific reason and for a specific time and for a specific purpose but that's Elijah but how do you compare the life of someone like Elijah with Simon of Cyrene Simon of Cyrene is not a prophet there were no books written about Simon of Cyrene his name is not found in Hebrews 11 when Paul recounts the heroes of faith but in God's great drama Simon of Cyrene finds himself at a familiar place at a unique time he is not a Jew he is not a Roman he is from Cyrene but yet he finds himself in Jerusalem in the closing days of Jesus' ministry his ministry was not for months or years or weeks Simon's ministry would be for, for a few moments the entire Old Testament was pointing to a Messiah Amen. the entire New Testament would speak of a Messiah Amen. and how he would change the world but Simon of Cyrene finds himself in the middle of a crowd of people in the days just after the feast of the Passover and he witnesses people carrying crosses he is a witness in that day and time the Bible doesn't tell us if he understood what was taking place but he found himself there in that day crucifixions were common in Jerusalem but this day was different Amen. among the men to be crucified was a man called Jesus a man who did nothing to deserve this a man without sin a man who had done no wrong but he found himself in the middle of a situation watching this drama unfold 
He watched this man called Jesus being bruised, being battered, being scarred, being mocked at, being spit upon. Bruised, tired and weary. He watched this man no longer able to carry his cross. And this man called Simon of Cyrene is commanded to take the cross from Jesus and to bear the weight for him. How precious is it to carry the cross of Jesus? With the weight of sin on Jesus' shoulders, what a blessing to carry his cross. And we could go on and on talking about different characters in the Bible and the roles that they play. But as every biblical character stepped forward, they played their role in God's drama. Each one having their part, each one having their place. And everyone here, you have your place in God's drama. It might be for a few moments, like Simon of Cyrene, or it could be for years, like Elijah. But I know that this bride has promised a short, quick message that would shake the whole nation. In God's great drama, he is moving all the pieces at the right time, at the right moment to achieve his plan. So don't think for a moment that you are here by accident, that you are here by chance. There's a purpose this morning for being here. There's a purpose that God called you. There's a purpose this message came to you. Somebody said amen. I'm saying all of that to build a background that it's, it's impossible to compare one to the other it's extremely difficult to compare one prophet to another but yet of all the biblical characters in the bible there is one character that has a unique distinction this distinction is not given to elijah it's not given to moses not given to noah but this distinction and this description is called a man after my own heart. In the whole of the Bible, throughout all of history, there's only one man who has the distinction of being described by God as a man after my own heart. God spoke lip to ear to Moses, but this man I'm talking about this morning was a man that God looked at and said, there's a man after my own heart and i believe this morning once more god will have men after his own heart somebody say amen so by the grace of god this morning i want to speak on that thought this morning a man after god's own heart so shall we take our bibles read one scripture from the book of acts chapter 13 I'm reading verse 16. I want to thank the musicians in particular, Brother John Mark, for taking up the challenge this morning. Oh, bless you. You appreciate Brother John Mark. Yeah. Reading from Acts chapter 13 and reading from verse 16. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said men of israel and ye that fear god give audience the god of this people of israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of egypt and with an high arm brought he them out of it and about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness and when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they desired a king. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin by the space of 40 years. And I like this. And when he had removed him, Saul was fired. God fired Saul. When he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill 
all my will may the lord add a blessing to the reading of his word can we pray one more time heavenly father lord any man could read the scripture but it takes the holy spirit to bring it to life may you bring it to life this morning as a living reality for your people to go into action lord may you bless the reading of the word bless the hearing of it may you open the understanding of your people may you anoint me touch my vocal cords touch my weary body lord may no flesh be lord display this morning but may spirit spoken words come from this sacred desk this morning lord hide me behind Cal Calvary's cross and speak to your people in the precious name of Jesus Christ and the church says amen, amen. you may be seated so for a title this morning a man after God's own heart and I'm going to take my time because I really want to drive a few things home this morning but our story begins with, as the scripture we read, where Paul is reflecting on the history of, of how they came to be. In our story, we find ourselves among the children of Israel. They had seen all the works. God took them out of Egypt. God blessed them. But when you read the book of Samuel, you find that the children of Israel were not satisfied with hearing from God. They were not satisfied with hearing from the prophets. And they looked internally, they looked outside, and they came to the prophet Samuel, to the elders, and said, We want a king like the Philistines. We want a king like the Amalekites. We want a man to rule us like these other tribes and nations. Because talking to God, we, we really don't want to do that all the time. We want to go to somebody. Fallen man always looks to some man to guide them, some man to lead them. And God was pleased. God was pleased with the way he had it before. That's why he told Samuel, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me. Because I have sent my prophets to give the word of the Lord to my people. So within the hearts of these people, God said, all right, you want a king? Go find one. And they looked and they had their election, they had their voting, they had their campaigning, and they picked by their choice the man called Saul. His resume looked good. The school he went to was good. His height was good. His speech was good. He was qualified for the job in their eyes, but it was not God's choice. It was man's choice. And whenever man chooses, man will make the wrong choice. Somebody say amen. I don't think you got that. Whenever man chooses, man will make the wrong choice. Because God has a will. God has a way. God has thoughts about everything. And I want the thoughts of God. I want the way of God. I want the will of God. Somebody say amen. God told Samuel, don't stress about it. Don't worry about it. They have not rejected you. They have turned me upside down. They have rejected me. And there will be consequences. And for 40 years Saul ruled. 40 years. And then the Bible said God removed him. God took him out of office. God moved him off the scene. Because God said I have found a better man. Now you have had your time to have your choice. But I'm going to make a choice now. And I have found a better man. Go to the house of Jesse. A little village down somewhere. And you will find my choice. His name is not anywhere. Nobody knows about him. He hasn't gone to school. He doesn't have a degree. He's not qualified. But he is my choice. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. You may be seated. But most importantly, he's a man after my own heart. There are people who are intellectually in the message, but their heart is not of God. We're talking about a man after God's own heart. And God qualifies it. He says, which shall fulfill all my will. So the designation, the condition, the link between those two statements is a man after my own heart who will fulfill all my will. Not his will, not his ideas, not his dreams, not his visions, but my will. Oh, somebody hear me this morning. Is there anybody in the house who wants to fulfill the will of God? You may be seated. You know what's hindering you? Your will. 
your belief your ideas your thoughts on the matter how you see things how you process things what you knew when you were a child when you all of that is what's hindering you but if you could shut your mind and shut your heart and shut your spirit to all that is you and die out to yourself then the will of God it's something to get the will of God you may be seated is there anybody in the house this morning is there anybody in the church this morning the will of God is such a powerful thing that even Jesus when he walked on this earth had to come face to face with the battle of wills you don't hear me this morning Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane it wasn't his first time there Jesus was very often in the garden of Gethsemane but the few days before he was crucified as he traversed that area once more he came face to face with Lord not my will but thy will be done because my will would not be to get pain not have trials not have testings not have situations but not my will he said father if it is possible let this cup pass father if it is possible let this trial pass let this test pass let this situation pass but nonetheless not my will but thy will be done give me a church with individuals seeking the will of God we'll turn this country upside down give me a church with people without their will without their ambition without their desires and watch God move on the scene somebody say amen you may be seated man's choice man's choice that's why the fivefold ministry cannot be man's choice it has to be God's choice because God told Samuel when he went by the house of Jesse he said forget how they look forget how they speak I'm not looking at the external countenance I'm not looking at their background I'm not looking at how long their resume David had no ministry David was unknown David didn't even wasn't even make the cut to be in the army but that was God's choice that was God's choice and the enemy might be looking at you right now and say you have failed so many times you have no great testimony but that doesn't change the fact that you are God's choice the trial that you have doesn't change the fact that you are God's choice you don't hear me this morning when the lion came to David he may have wondered why this lion coming here there are other shepherds there are other sheep pastures but David didn't know that he was God's choice and his trials his testings was preparing him for kingship that he didn't know he was going to carry one day his trials his testing was preparing him for what his purpose was in life but he was too young to understand it he didn't have the experience to appreciate it and he didn't know because it had never happened before can the church say amen you may be seated God give us some more men after your own heart when we think about the life of David many things come to mind are you with me this morning Amen. can I take my time this morning Amen. hope you got a good rest last night because when we come to church we come to church as brother Ovid said I was I was connected to the service in Germany you know I was connected but Ovid said I'm not talking about closing because we still open and the believers over there who were connected say what <laughs> said he's not closing yet <laughs> so we come and the doors are open right now we're not closing right now but when we think about the life of David, many things come to mind. The little shepherd boy, the musician, Amen. being anointed by Samuel. And as you read the book of Psalms, you see every emotion imaginable being displayed. Joy, peace, frustration, fear, pain, anger, anguish, grief desire sadness every emotion that somebody could experience is captured in the life of David Amen. look at Moses Elijah we have glimpses of their lives not David David grows up as it were before our eyes as a boy as a man his failures his ups his down and all the way to his entire tapestry of his life spans Samuel to the book of Psalms written in the Old and the New Testament speak about David Amen. 
grows up before our very eyes. We see him as a shepherd, a hunter, a warrior, a general, a king, a poet, a champion, an outlaw, a ladies man, a musician, a prophet, a worship leader, an adulterer, a murderer, a brother, a husband, a son, a parent, a leader, a hero, a builder, an ancestor of Jesus Christ, and a man after God's own heart. his frustration in Hebrews 11 they don't speak about it he is numbered among the heroes of faith what will your testimony be I'm telling you your ups and downs will not be remembered your failures will not be remembered what you did will not be remembered because it will be put in a sea of forgetfulness there is nothing against you because you are the new heroes of faith men after God own heart Can we have church this morning? Can we preach this morning? Can we enjoy the Lord this morning? You may be seated. So I want us to take a drive this morning with the Marlon into the mind and heart of this man who had his heart like God. You see, it's difficult to really identify with Jesus. Because in your mind and heart, he is Messiah, Savior, and you really as a human can relate to his experience the Bible says he didn't sin he was tempted as we are but Jesus is still Jesus but Jesus left a secret for us he left an example to us after as a man after his own heart so when you feel frustrated there's no scripture of Jesus being frustrated but David he has frustration are you with me so David the shepherd the shepherd David says the Lord is my shepherd that is a profound statement because he knew what being a shepherd was all about so with a deep and a reflective and internal understanding brother popular being a shepherd he said the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want because David had experience taking care of the sheep and he made sure his sheep did not want can you ride with me this morning he leaded me beside the still waters when I need a rest, he knows exactly where to carry me. He leaded me beside the still water. He restored my soul. Is there anybody needs a restoring of the soul this morning? You may be seated. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's not about me, it's about him. He will protect his name. He will defend his name. He said, He may be seated. Maybe this is speaking to somebody this morning. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Death all around me, I will fear no evil. That's how we got to speak in the morning, in the middle of the day. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. What a comfort to know that thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Let me stop there for a moment. You may be seated. And you don't have any enemies? God's got to get some enemies for you. To prepare a table for you. In the presence of your enemies. So don't feel bad when you have enemies. Because God is waiting for the enemies to come around you. To prepare a table for you. In the presence. As the young people will say. In the presence of your haters. He going to put a table for you. Oh you don't hear me this morning preach with me somebody ride with me this morning our God is a big God our God is a good God our God is a powerful God you may be seated thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemy while they're watching me while they're looking at me I'm gonna be eating and it's not my doing when he sets the table you don't mess with the table when he sets the table for the Thompson, you don't move the dishes around. You don't take the chicken from me. God put that there for me. Don't touch it. Don't mess with it. Get your own table. Somebody say amen. You may be seated. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 
Oh, when the blessing of the law pour, the cup runs over. You could always keep drinking. There's no need for a refill because he is my refilling. He is my joy. He is my peace. How real are these words this morning from a man after God's own heart? You may be seated. Surely, surely, most assuredly, positively, without hesitation, without doubting, without wondering, without being perplexed, surely goodness and mercy. When I need mercy, it's going to be following me all the days of my life. When I give up on God, he's not going to give up on me because goodness and mercy will follow me. When I think I can't make it, goodness and mercy is always with me. When I'm backslidden, goodness and mercy is there to carry me. When everybody walks away, goodness and mercy you may be seated and David closes this sermon and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever there comes a time when backsliding is not even an option there comes a time where the world is not an option but you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever nobody could bring you in the kingdom nobody could push you out of the kingdom David had a revelation that all that the father has given me must come and the devil cannot take you he cannot push you out you belong to God you come from God you are going back to God set the church say amen Ma, 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 ma. Anybody love Jesus this morning? Anybody love the Lord this morning? Are you glad you're in the house of God this morning? So we're still taking a journey this morning through the life, through the eyes, the emotions, the handwriting, the musical strings that are played by this man after God's own heart. It's like a roller coaster following David's life because while he screams and he shouts the adoration then you read Lord how are they increased that trouble me many are they that rise up against me many there be with say in the message of my soul there is no help for him in God a shield for me my glory and the lifter up of my head that's my testimony I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of this holy hill I laid me down and slept I awaked for the Lord sustained me I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about is that your testimony be encouraged this morning hear how a man speaks when he's a man after God's own heart you may be seated this morning but a joy to see you smiling this morning this takes you deep down and it, 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 it helps you to rephrase your thinking and that's why reading the scripture sister Oliveri is so powerful because when you are in this, it's hard to shake you. It's hard for you to go and do foolishness in the world when you are in the word. Amen. Just a few more. I'm not rushing. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Hear the words this morning of a man after God's own heart. The Lord is my strength and song. 
and it's become my salvation the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous the right hand of the Lord do it valiantly the right hand of the Lord is exalted the right hand of the Lord do it valiantly I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord that's your prophecy the Lord had chastened me so but he had not given me over unto death and as many as he love he rebuke and chasten so he chasten you so he give you a good cut skin as we say in Amen. but here go kill you chasten you so he want you to feel it a little light chastening wouldn't do the effect he want you to know that when you do foolishness you do foolishness and the rod comes to correct you to get you back in line not in line with your ideas but in line with his word and in line with his will and in line with his purpose in line with his objectives open to me the gates of righteousness i will go into them and i will praise the lord this gate of the lord into which the righteous shall enter i will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation the stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Amen. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad amen. in it. Hallelujah. Can the church say amen? amen? And if David was here this morning, he would say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Aren't you happy you're in the house of the Lord this morning? So I encourage you this week, spend some time in the book of Psalms. Spend some time in the scriptures and be refreshed. Because that's what God wants you. Meditate on the word day and night. And you will have good success. So let's move on a bit. Talking about David. Some would say that David is most remembered for his encounter with Goliath. For some it would be the definition of his greatest success. For in the midst of a situation where the whole of Israel, not like a house, the whole of Israel was at pause. No movement. Because we can't find any minister, any preacher, any brother, elder, deacon, trustee, help government to go and deal with this situation that the Philistines have brought about yes, yes. under the headship of this man called Goliath Saul is still king and Saul is ready to give his daughter his money, his house, his left foot his right arm, his cell phone anything to anybody who go and fight that man yes, 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 yes. because Saul man's choice is scared he wants nothing to do and this is the tallest man eh? he was chosen because of his height one of his reasons was his height and here he's trembling, saying, take whoever, whoever could fight that man. Let me know. My daughter, money, title, house, car, land, cell phone, you name it. And here's this little shepherd boy named David. <clears throat> not in the army, not a soldier. Bringing food for his brethren. But the brother said, may have been raisins. And he just happened to hear this cry from this man called Goliath. Send me a man to fight me. And as he's walking, I can imagine he didn't know what was going on. He's like, okay, somebody gonna go and then he, wait, nobody going. I mean, David has the greatest. This is the army of Israel, you know. There's not no Palestine army or Egyptian army. This is Israel. Yes. He didn't come to watch the fight. He came to bring food. Yeah, as he's walking away, he hears this cry. He look around. Well, somebody gotta be. Nobody going. And he asks the brother in the back, "Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Yes. How the army spin now?" He said, let me go back and talk to Saul. Saul talking to anybody. You know. <laughs> How does a shepherd boy end up in the king's tent? Think about it. This is a big army. Saul take anybody. Anybody come. Desperate. Amen. So King David come and say, well, I think I can handle it. He said, well, you're good enough. Take my armor, take my shield. Take the, I had this. The latest, this is the latest one. Tesla made this one. This is the latest one. The, all the solar powered everything. David said, I don't need that. I need a slingshot and I need my God because when I was there with the sheep nobody was watching me but a lion came 
and I'll be a king and I'll give it to them good because I know who my God is and he is my deliverer. A man after God's own heart. And we know the story, David knocked out that giant. But I want to talk about another giant. This giant called Goliath, David conquered. But in this life of this man called Goliath, in this life of this man called David, rather, I want to talk a little bit about a giant he couldn't conquer. Because after his greatest victory, David also had to contend with his greatest defeat. Because as much as he was spiritual as a singer, there was a giant in his heart that led him to go after Bathsheba. And he couldn't conquer that giant. Because it took a greater power to overcome that giant than David had. If David had the power at that time to overcome that giant, we would need a mighty conqueror. That's powerful. So God, through the tapestry of how he was unveiling things, was creating these voids to show there's a conqueror that will come, that will overcome everything. Amen. Not just in the physical or the mind, but in the body and the flesh. There will be a Christ that will come, that David, who would conquer and be the mighty conqueror. Amen. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. So that because he is the mighty conqueror, we could also be more than conquerors. So in the life of David being lived out, he had to also show the need for a Messiah. I want you to understand this because many of us, we try to do it on our own. And Brother Branham said, when he was preaching, he said, you can't do it, huh? Or maybe you think you could do it. He said, that's right, you can't do it. It takes the Holy Ghost to give you the power to do it. Because if it's not the Holy Ghost, it's your mind, it's mental. Like people who go to the mountain and meditate and they block the world out and they're so focused, they're watching a stone for like 82 hours to not think about anything else. That's not what God wants you to do. He wants the Holy Ghost to be in the control tower of your heart. And conquer the lust of the eyes. Conquer the lust of the flesh. Conquer the pride of life because he is living something out. Can the church say amen? amen. And after all David's ups and downs, God looked beyond all that and says, he will fulfill all my will. When the devil thought he had David knocked out, the will of God prevailed. God wanted David to build a temple, but David's hand had so much blood, he said, no, 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 no. But my will will be prevailed in your life. And your son, your seed, Solomon, he will, he will build the temple. Through the prophet Nathan, God told David in 2 Samuel, And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Amen. Great King David and his line and his seed. Can the church say amen? amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. So through the line of David, as you read the scripture, we come right down to Jesus. But the brand of the message, Christ is the mystery of God revealed, said he, talking about Jesus, is the principal theme of the Bible. Amen. He was in the prophets. He was in the Psalms. He was in the history of the Bible. The Bible is a prophetic book. It's a historical book. It's a book of love. It's a book of songs. It's a book of life. And in there you find Christ. He was in the prophets. He was in the Psalms. He was in the history. He also in the Bible is the things that is to come. Amen. That's why it's so important that we spend time in the scripture to know what our scripture is. Amen. What does that make him then? But the Bible said the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we know that Jesus came with three titles. Son of God, son of man, and son of David. That's how powerful that King David line is. The very first sentence in the New Testament in Matthew 1.1 1, 1 says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Amen. And as you look through Matthew, 
Matthew 1 to 3 to 4, see everything Jesus is going through. By the time Jesus is healing and delivering the people, by the time you reach Matthew 12, the people, the, the scripture says in Matthew 12, 23, and all the people were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? Because all of the Jews were awaiting this son from the line of David who would be a deliverer, who would be a messiah. And, they, and Jesus was troubling the water so much. You see, is not this the son of David? Can the church say amen? amen? And I believe that God will have another ministry. Another David's ministry on the earth again. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen? What is that ministry? Men after God's own heart on the earth. And Christ himself, that David, leading this army straight to the resurrection. Straight to the rapture. Can the church say Amen. amen. In the message, perfect strength by perfect weakness. But the Bible said, that's what's the matter today. God's got a lot of sheep that's gone astray. The organization and things has stole them out, brought them out into psychology. God gave us Davids with the word of God and the power of God to direct it when we go to meet these intellectual giants. Give me the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and I tell you we can slay every giant in the field. Can the church say amen? That's what I'm looking for, the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. We need dynamics and we need mechanics. We need that same Jesus, that David to stand and lead his army can the church say amen, amen. oh my 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 and Brother Branham said in the same message and today we know we need a revival amen. we know we need a stirring amongst the people, it will not take a doctor of divinity, it will take a weak, he talking about hallelujah that'll take the word of God, he talking about weak people that'll take the word of God in the power of the resurrection of Christ and slay this thing it'll bring Christ to the country and let them see that he can still open the eyes of the blind he can still heal the sick he can still raise the dead, he is God conqueror, we need a David untrained in the theological schools, we need a man who knows nothing about that some little plow boy or some Something, some little guy with his stooped shoulders not much to look at will come walking down the road with the power of God let me prophesy God will have some Davids walking this island walking around the world there won't be much to look at but it'll be packing the power of God silver and gold I don't have but such as I have because Christ that David will be in them can the church say amen but the Branham said in the message this great warrior David, he said, you are Davids. I do, do we have any Davids in the house this morning? He said, you are Davids. You are called, elected, anointed, positionally put in the body of Jesus Christ by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then Brother Branham screams out, Goliath, you are defeated. He's defeated tonight. And I say this morning, Goliath is defeated. Oh, you don't hear me. I know some of you still looking at Goliath, but he's defeated. Goliath was standing there and he was defeated. He didn't even know it. And this morning, your Goliath is looking at you and he's defeated. He is finished. You are already overcome. You are already conquerors. You are already victorious. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother, there's coming a time when adopted sons will stand up and speak. But the Branham said the pillar of fire will be veiled in the adopted sons. In that season of adoption, all the Philistines, but the Branham said, will go to backing up because the Philistines are the personal demons. And I'm speaking to people this morning, got some personal demons, some personal issues, but we're looking for the fire to burn these personal demons out. The ones you've been carrying for a long time, the ones nobody knows about, the ones you worry about these personal demons these philistines goliath his cousins his family his neighbors his relatives we come to serve them notice david is on the scene david is in the house david is in the camp we have heard the declaration for a long time send me a man send me a man well there's been
and churches, churches, brides, brides, churches, churches, but it's going to come another one. There's going to come a David's ministry, another people who under their messenger would be the final voice to the final age. We're going to begin to turn. We're going to begin to swing five stones, five stones, and we're just going to take one and begin to swing. Because if you only get started, or oh, you don't hear me this morning, if you only get started, God is going to do the rest. So this morning, all the Davids, get your slings out. Put that stone in that sling and you begin to worship. You begin to turn. You begin to praise and watch God do something in your life. Watch God do something in your family. Somebody say amen. You may be seated. Amen. Who's the Goliath, Brother Branham? Question. Who's the Goliath? Brother Branham said, that cancer that's eating you up, that tumor, the cataract in your eyes, the crippled arm, everything looks at it and says it can't be done. The devil might say, you might as well quit believing. You might as well backslide all that. That's Goliath. You might as well settle down because you can't never no more get well. The doctor said so. All the rest of them said so. You can't get well. But this morning, hear the prophet. But the cries that made you stop your drinking, smoking, lying, stealing, that saved you from a life of drunkenness, from rolling, from sin and a devil's grave. If God can do that for you, he can save you from your teeth from your cancer but the man said he's a Goliath don't take his boast don't take what the devil is telling you don't take his boast we are not listening to him this morning stand in the name of the Lord Jesus and challenge him to a showdown and that's what I'm doing in this church this morning I'm challenging lust I'm challenging lying I'm challenging fornication I'm challenging adultery I'm challenging that no praise demon I'm challenging back him. I'm challenging cancer and high blood pressure and female condition. I challenge diabetes, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, high sugar, low sugar. Every Goliath, we come against you in the name of the living God. We come against you as the church of the living God and we serve you notice. We will cut your head off. Can the church say amen? Oh my, stand in the name of the Lord Jesus and challenge him to a showdown. We have taken what the devil offered for too long, but draw your swords all over the building. Draw your swords, challenge the devil, challenge that no praise demon, challenge your doubt, challenge your fear, challenge your unbelief. You are born to overcome. You are more than conquerors. You are victorious. <laughs> I feel religious. But Abraham said, I feel religious positionally in Christ. He said, if the believer knowed his position, he'd have it. Oh, let me say that again. If a believer knowed his position, he'd have it. David knew his position. His fate was not based on Saul. His fate wasn't based on Jesse, his father. His fate was based on the living God who delivered him. So you may not be where you're supposed to be, but once you're not where you used to be, it was God who took you from where you were to where you are now. That's enough of a reason to shout. Because you couldn't bring yourself anywhere. You couldn't even come to church this morning if the Lord didn't call you. So once you have a testimony, I know you're not where you're supposed to be. But if you're not where you used to be, then you begin to shout. If you're not where you used to be, you can worship. Because he took me out of the Mary Clay. He put my foot on a rock to stay. And the Bible says he who started the work in you is able, more than able, to complete it. Because he's the author and he's the finisher. He's the alpha. He is the omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the first. He is the last. He is that David. He is the Messiah. He is the redeemer. He is the savior. 
the mighty conqueror sickness has to listen doubt has to listen your son has to listen your daughter has to listen that demon has got to go because when he speaks every knee will bow every tongue will confess there's no name higher than the name of the Lord Jesus You may be seated. But the Branham said, I want to see that again. If the believer know his position, he'd have it. You have to know your position because your position means you have to conduct yourself a certain way. If your father is the king, you have to conduct yourself like your father is the king. In fact, in the royal house, if you study the house uh, the, 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 in England, the queen and the family, when Kate had to marry Prince, Prince whatever name was, William, right, they had to take her to a certain training because she had never lived in the house before. You have to know how to walk, how to talk, how to dress, who is in charge of which dukedom and which kingdom and which, which section and know them by name because you can't appear to not know who is the Earl of Nottingham or the Duke of Rochester or whatever. You got to know. So God is taking us through some training this morning because we are sons of the king and you got to know who you are. You got to know your position. You got to know what powers you have. So when the enemy comes to you, you don't need to get permission to send a bloodhound after your son. You know you have access to the throne. You know all that the father has given must come. You know whatever you bind on earth is bound in bound in heaven whenever you loose on earth loose in heaven you just have to speak because if you shall say to this mountain be moved and don't doubt you're gonna have it when you know your position all of a sudden your vocabulary will change your walk change your talk change it why you know who you are you know where you come from you know where you are going Somebody say amen. amen. Friends, you may be seated. This is not a game. This is not a joke. This is not us coming together just to have a good time and, and we try to put together a great message to get you. No, this is about you coming into your position with God. When the veil was rent from top to bottom, God broke the old system of the priesthood and said, now you are priests. You are kings. You have direct access. You don't need to go through anybody. You don't even need a preacher to pray for you. You can go straight to the throne of God and say, Lord, it's mine. Lord, you promise it's mine. I need it this morning. I need the Holy Ghost today. I need my healing now. I need deliverance now. I need my son this morning. Direct access. You may be seated. David didn't ask permission. David didn't tell Saul, Saul, give me a script so I could read it to Goliath. Give me a quote so I could tell Goliath. All David said was, I will chop your head off. Give me some more Christians who will begin to threaten the devil. You, 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 you did not hear me this morning. Some of you have been under threat for so long, you never even thought about threat to the devil. Threat, say, devil, I'm coming to chop your head off. And if you don't know who I am, check David. Ch check David. I'm just like David because I'm going to be a man after God's own heart. But you fail. David failed. Check his resume. But in Hebrews 11, they didn't talk about it. David backslid. Look at me. I backslid. But the Lord had delivered me. The Lord had restored my soul. Satan, you better watch me. But don't touch me. Because I'm still going to chop your head off. Yeah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let the devil take time writing on all my mistakes, all my failures, all my shortcomings. Let him take his time and do that. All I'm doing is this. You write, I'm swinging. You talk, I'm swinging. You laugh, I'm swinging. I don't have a sword, but I'll chop your head off. Oh, somebody give God a shout. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. But the Pranam said, God's great spirit is here. And listen, and his Holy Ghost is ready to fall on anybody that will believe it. That's open to anybody this morning. It's an open invitation to anybody this morning who will believe that the Holy Ghost is yours. It's open to anybody this morning who will believe that you could be delivered this morning. It's open to anybody this morning who came in with a demon and you want to go free. We could cast that demon out this morning. It's open to you this morning. You you may have walked in past living, but you can leave here free this morning. It's open this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God worship. Somebody thank him this morning. He inhabits the praises of his people. He loves it when you worship. David said, as the heart panted after the water broke, so my soul thirst after thee, O oh God, thirst after the living God. Is there a thirst in your heart this morning? Thirst is a painful desire. David said, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Make this your prayer this morning. Renew a right spirit. Lord, you know my spirit has not been right, but renew a right spirit. A right spirit about your word. A right spirit about the prophet. A right spirit about the message. Cast me not away from your presence oh take not thy spirit from me restore unto me the joy of my salvation yes you're saved but you got no joy but this morning restore unto me the joy the joy of when I first met you the joy when you first touched me give me back my joy this morning <laughs> hallelujah Hallelujah. God's great spirit is here. And his Holy Ghost is ready to fall on anybody that will believe it. Do you believe it? That's, what that, that's, that's the prophet. Do you believe it? Amen. God has promised it. God will do it. You're in Christ. But the Branham goes on. Goliath's a bragging. He's talking. Goliath says, you see, you was here last night and didn't get healed. You came to services before and nothing happened. You was at the other meetings, didn't get healed. But the prophet said, who is that uncircumcised devil? But, but, but the prophet said, who is that devil, listen, that has no relationship with God at all? No relationship with God. Who is that devil that stands with nothing but a defeated thing behind him? His master was defeated at Calvary by our Lord and our conqueror. Hallelujah. He's a bluff. That's all. We won't believe him anymore. And the prophet said, down with him. And if it's three words you go this week with, it's down with him. Who? Down with the devil. Down with Goliath. Down with, down with him this morning. Enough is enough. Down with him this morning. Enough is enough we're not taking it anymore i'm not taking my sickness anymore i'm not taking my fear anymore i'm not taking it anymore enough is enough down with him we serve notice i'm not going to be a half with christian anymore i'm going to the resurrection i'm going to be adopted i'm going to be perfected i'm going to be filled with the holy ghost seven living voices will come out of my life can the church say amen whether I, tame my, whether I maintain my family, let me maintain Christ. Let me maintain Christ. You may be seated. You see what made David unique? He had a relationship with God. And that's what's missing in the church today. People have relationships with one another. They want to call the pastor. They want to fellowship with a brother. But there's no relationship with God. David didn't go and talk to Saul about his problems. He went to the Lord about it. And that's what we need to talk to the Lord about it. You may be seated. Do you understand that the role, and I said this in Germany last Sunday, the fivefold ministry's role is limited. Because it's until we all come to the unity of the faith, there's a condition. So there'll come a time when we'll all come to the unity of the faith. 
So I'm just here to point you, and when you connect with God, that's it, you know. I'm not trying to keep you tired and come and no, there come a time when there's my spirit flowing freely. How I can get between my spirit flowing freely between you and God. Yeah. Say, Lord, let me still I want to make a break in the connection. I want to connect in that line to no. You connect it to your father. He's your father. I'm not your father. That's why the Bible says, call no man father. You call, I, I could be your father, really? He is your father. He is your Lord. He is your king. He is your redeemer. It's just through the foolishness of preaching. We are pointing you back to home. Back to your father. Back to our homecoming. Because like the prodigal son, he is looking out for you. A long time ago, you walked away. Did your own thing. And God set up a whole system waiting you to come back. Waiting you to come back home. You forgot you had spiritual amnesia. You forgot you were back there before the foundation of the world. You forgot you kicked the devil out. You forgot you were fighting alongside Michael. You forgot that. But our job is to remind you. Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth and the morning stars sang together? You were there. You were there. Listen. You may be seated. There'll be no prayer requests over there. You know. There's only praises. We will have no prayer requests. There'll be no worries. There'll be no take it to the Lord in prayer. You'll have a perfect body, a perfect joy. I can't wait to talk to David myself for him to explain what he was going through. I can only understand a fraction of it. But the one thing I know, he was just like me. He was just like me with his struggles, his up and down. And if God could deliver him, he could deliver me. If God could save him, he could save me. If God could restore him, he could restore me. And he was a man after God's own heart. Ma, 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 ma. You may be seated, well, you know me, I'm not, I'm not too long of a preacher. I told him in Germany I'll be maybe three, four hours more, but after an hour, <laughs> pastor said to stay open, doors starting to close. <laughs> Just a few more minutes. Huh? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So God's wanting to place his church. His sons and daughters of God. But the brand I'm in adoption said, God, let me live to see it. Is my prayer. So close till I can just feel it with my hands almost. Look, it's right there. That's what the brand I'm gesturing. But the brand I'm was looking for something, but God didn't let him see it because he took him home. And then he goes on, that's what I've longed to see, waiting for the time when walked on the street, there lays a cripple laying there from his mother's womb. Silver and gold have I none. Oh, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. That's what this is about. It's about a reality, not yeah. being in the message or coming to the church, but a living reality of the living God. When God, but the Bible said, will make himself known. When they'll stop sickness, when they'll stop cancer, when they'll stop diseases. But the Bible said, right now we lay hands on the sick. But in that time, when that David is leading his people, we will command the demons to leave. No more pray in the name of Jesus. Say, Devil, get out. Cancer, get out. Can the church say amen? Brother, I long to see that day. I'm looking for that day. Is there anybody looking for that day? Lazarus was dead. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus find himself back. You know. What about your son? What about your daughter? You don't think God could speak a word and bring them back? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Say at the appointed time I will return unto you according to the time of life and you're gonna see your son come back your daughter come back your loved one come back just stay faithful to God's promise and watch God work through you live a life live the testimony anybody could speak but the thunder that shakes the devil is that lived voice that humility sweetness forgiveness brotherly love it's still the same message it doesn't change it's the same gospel can the church say amen I'm beginning to wind down the prophet introduced Messiah he 
introduced that David. He introduced the deliverer. He restored back the feet. He revealed every mystery and left us with a promise of dynamics. But you have got to take the land. And we know it's a good land. We have the evidence of that land. We have been living by the evidence of the new land, the son of man. And I believe the time has come. The season has changed and the hour is upon us. For David's, for the Brown said, to step up. We need these Davids to step up and take their position. Satan thought he could stop this. He could stop this mighty revival, but it's too late. The seven seals, seven ton of land is a good land. We already know us. You can't tell us anything else about it. We know what our possession is. We know what our promise is. We know rapture and faith is laying in the message. I say this morning, let us not delay anymore. Let us go up at once and take what belongs to us. Can the church say amen? Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to close now. The musician can come up now. How was that inheritance given to us? Through what? Predestination. Predestination is foreknowledge. How did God know he could trust you to be a preacher? His foreknowledge. Not he that will it or he that run it. It's God that show it mercy. That's right. Predestination. He knew what was in you. Just like he knew what was in David. He knew what was in you before you even come on the earth. He knowed what was in you before there was ever an earth for you to come on. That's him. That's the infinite God. The infinite. We are finite. We can only think finite. Can the church say amen? So let me put a prophecy in there in hear ye him there'll be a power put into the church and now it's coming in that the holy spirit will so annoy the people that's your promise till they'll speak the word and it'll create itself right there we haven't seen powers like that come into the church now i know it for a fact say unto this mountain be moved don't doubt in your heart but believe that what you have said shall come to pass you can have what you have said listen the placing of the church in position. That's what we're looking for. Place the church in position where the fullness of the power of the Holy Ghost comes into the church. Then critics' mouths will be shut. It'll be a short time. Jesus coming right off the mountain went straight to Calvary. Notice it won't last long, but it'll be here. Can the church say amen? It no, it is not, but Abraham said, I'm only building. The hour is close at hand when you're going to see something happen. When something's going to take place and all this background, all these services, all these messages has only been laying a foundation for a short, quick message that will shake the whole nation. This world is going to shake. This nation is going to shake. I'm closing from the spoken word is the original seed. Then from a little group of the true seed of the word, God will present Christ, a beloved bride, a virgin, a virgin of his word. And listen, and through them and by them will be fulfilled all that was promised for his word in the virgin. Now that does, does that sound familiar? Amen. Through them and by them will be fulfilled all. Wasn't that was what was said of David? A man after my own heart, he will do all of my will. And then Brother Branham is saying a bride, a virgin, through them and by them will be fulfilled all that was promised. So that ministry that David had would be a ministry that the bride will have because she will have that nature to fulfill all of God's will. So wait a minute, all these years, God has been waiting for somebody to come into the scene who could be so surrendered to him that they could do all of his will, all of his plans. And through that people, this world will be finished. Through that people will be great deliverance. Through that people, this earth will be burned in fire. Through that people, the world once more will hear from God again. Can the church say amen? Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. You can begin to play something softly. Friends, a man after God's own heart. I don't know what condition you came in here this morning. But I pray that deep in your heart you want to be like Jesus. There's a song, I want to be a Christian in my heart. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Christ. 
I want his nature, I want his being, I want his attributes. So when he looks at you, he sees a reflection. He sees himself. When he looked at David, he saw himself. A man after his own heart. Friends, that's what our desire should be. To be so surrendered, so committed, so dedicated with our will. I want you to think about that in your prayer closet. Where your will, your desires no longer exist and it's just his will if jesus could pray the prayer and say father not my will but thine be done we could all pray that same prayer may the lord richly bless you this morning blessed to be a wonderful name oh hallelujah 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 oh blessed blessed be your name Oh, a man after God's own heart. Oh, God bless you, Brother Isaac. Oh, how many appreciate Brother Isaac this morning? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your servant this morning, Lord. Oh, a man after God's own heart. Oh, blessed be your name. Oh, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, oh, in my heart, yes, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart say it one more time lord i want to be lord i want to be a christian in my heart lord i want to be a christian in my heart in my heart in my heart oh hallelujah why don't you worship him this morning oh as the music plays softly oh is that your prayer this morning lord i want to be a christian lord i want to be more like you lord oh hallelujah 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 oh blessed be your name lord like david lord a man after your own heart lord father Oh, Lord, you want to be after your own heart this morning, Lord. You want to be more like you this morning, a true Christian, Lord. Oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart. in my heart oh blessed be your name blessed be your name oh hallelujah 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 oh blessed blessed be a wonderful name oh thank you jesus thank you jesus oh hallelujah i will praise the lord no matter what tomorrow bring i will praise the lord david said as for me and my house I will serve the Lord. And we are saying this morning, we are going to serve the Lord. We are going to praise the Lord this morning. No matter what tomorrow brings, what it has in store, we are going to praise the Lord this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I will praise the Lord. Why don't you greet your brother and greet your sister? Oh, I will praise the Lord. Yeah. I, I will praise, praise the Lord, no matter what tomorrow brings. Oh, no matter what tomorrow brings, what it has in store, what it has in store, 
I know I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. Oh, 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 oh I, I will praise, praise. Oh, 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 I will praise, praise the Lord. No matter what tomorrow brings. What it has in store, what it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. Say it one more time, I will praise the Lord. morning oh you appreciate the word this morning a man after God's own heart oh hallelujah a man after God's own heart can never be defeated he's a victorious person oh hallelujah let's sing that song I will not be defeated no I won't for the Lord is on my side I will not be denied I will not be defeated no I won't oh I will not be defeated no I won't Oh, yeah, yeah, I will not be defeated, no, I won't, yeah, oh, for the Lord is on my side, oh, I will not be denied, oh, I will not be defeated, no, I won't, I will not be defeated, no, I won't, no, I won't, yeah, I will not be no, I won't. Oh, for the Lord is on my side. Oh, I will not be denied. Yes, I will not be defeated. No, I won't. Oh, I will not be. I will not be defeated. No, I won't. Yes, no, I will not be defeated. Yes, I will not be denied. Oh, I 
will not be defeated. No, I will. I will not be defeated. No, I won't. Yes, will not be. I will not be defeated. No, I won't. Oh, for the Lord is on my side. Yes, I will not be denied. Oh, I will not be defeated. No. Blessed be a wonderful name. You will not be defeated this morning. We have a dedication this eve this morning. Let's sing that song. Bring them in, bring them in. Oh bring them in. Oh bring them in. Oh bring them in. For on the feet of forward bring them in bring them in bring them in from the fields of sin bring them in bring them in bring the little ones to Jesus this morning we have Hamila Jamila Oliver Ramada to dedicate this morning. We just want to bow our heads as Bertari offered up to the Lord. Offer up to the Lord. Almighty God, Father, we come before your presence to bring this child before your throne of grace and mercy. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit come over this child, Lord, and protect this child from harm, from danger, from evil, yes. and from sickness. Lord, may a child be grown up, Lord, in the fear of the Lord. May I bless the parents, Lord, and may I provide for them. Bless the bread basket, Lord. Yes. We come at this child into your hands, and may the blessing, Lord, be upon this child. For we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in from the fields. Praise the Lord. This morning we have Lenny Oriana Williams to dedicate. Oh my, she looks like she's here a long time. Almighty God, Father, the proud parents bring this child into your house this morning. Before your throne of grace and mercy, we as the elders lift up before your throne, Lord. And we ask that you bless this child and protect it from harm, yes. from danger, from evil, and from sickness. May you bless the parents, Lord, may provide for them that this child may grow up in the fear and admonish the Lord. May you bless their bread basket and may you protect them and keep them. And bless this child in Jesus Christ's name. We pray and ask it. Amen. 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 Congratulations to you all. Bring them in. Bring them in. Bring them in from the field of sin. To Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's sing another song before we close in prayer. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such and yes, I praise you.
one more time. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Because you cared for me in such and yes, I praise you, Lord. Turn around and greet somebody in Jesus' name. One more time, we sing. I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such special way. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. David loved the Lord. Amen. A man after God's own heart. What a blessing to be here this morning. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And somebody has to have a heart for God to do his will. Because it's not your will. It's his will. You have to have a heart for God. It's not about you. It's about him. His will in your life, His will for the church. Where I'm saying what we see should make a church that will make a revival. That ought to be your burden. That you want to see what God want interpreted among us. Amen. And you want to put yourself in a position to become part of that. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Almighty God, I pray that you would pour out your richest blessing upon Brother Isaac this morning and replenish his strength. And give him fresh inspiration for the journey that lays ahead. Oh God, bless the ministries here. The gifts and talents, the elders, the deacons, right on down. To the laity, Father, may you pour out your spirit upon them, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for John Mark here, even standing the gap with the music. Lord, we pray anointing and inspire. Oh, we thank you for all the gifts and the talents that you place among us, Lord that we could by your grace can have effective ministry and i pray as your people go to their homes and different places that you be with them in a special way in just name we ask it amen and amen map your seats